So sit when we're done, your chair, feet down. Remember that um, it, it might be helpful to you to do something like, I get one of these. Because, uh, this, this is a, a fairly high density foam yoga block, but I've been known to use telephone directories if such things exist or anything. It just, just raises the feet a little bit. Some, some, some people find that 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 useful. So you can play around with 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 your posture and your weight a little bit forwards, just feeling that your legs are actually beginning to to support you a little bit. If I as I sit here, if I were to move my feet, um, I would kind of roll out the chair. I'm not about to demonstrate that for you. <laughs> it's in and. This is a phrase that we use to describe the way that our body settles in to its support. So if we were standing, obviously legs and hips are going to be primary importance, um, but sitting or standing, they're still important. But also, I do feel it's as though the outer part of the body sits, settles into the center of the body as, as, as well. So it's like my shoulders can go from this to this without the fear of me losing the, my, my shape or my structure or whatever. And we'll, we'll um, come back to that idea in, in a few moments. But now, just rubbing your hands together. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. down to one shoulder and your arm on the other side <laughs> and the upper part of your chest and belly and legs. Put your feet out and sit back in your chair Again, you, you can get a different perspective on this sitting process. You let yourself sink into the chair. So this is obviously connected with the Tai Chi concept of rooting down. But the other thing that you can do, you try to hold myself tight. It's like I'm pulling away from the chair. If I let go in those areas that are in contact with the chair, it's really sinking. I can feel the chair much more, more um, acutely. And in the same way, going back to what I was saying about sitting into the hips, sitting into the center of the body and so on. If you are able to just release, you will get a stronger sense of, 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 of that support. And with that goes a sense of confidence. If you go to sit in the chair and you look at it and you think, it looks a bit rickety, I'm not too sure, but I'll, I'll try it. You sit and you're a bit tentative at first, but then you think, as, as you settle in, you realise, oh, actually, it, it may look rickety, but actually it's quite strong. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. And then you start to feel it more. So there's a confidence thing that builds up in recognising that we do have some of this quality or what is referred to as internal strength in Tai Chi. So now coming back up to the upright position, and you don't have to be so forward on... The, the, the chair. The same thing again, and this is something that we want to bring into our standing as, as well. Obviously, you know, you're in a chair, the, the possibility of, of sort of like losing your posture isn't such a, 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 a drastic thing. But can you get that sense of feeling kind of heavier in, in, in your hips, M much more aware of your, 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 your buttocks against the, the, the chair? And significantly in in this position where you have a great deal of security can you get the sense of being able to just allow the exterior of your body to to to, to settle in and maybe the possibility and this is something to build up to slowly of actually as you saw i just move forwards there i'm no longer against the back of the chair in any form if my back started to ache then i would be um but just again, feeling that sense of 
confidence and familiarity with this in the same way that we sink into our favorite chair or something like that. And that confidence actually adds to our ability to move and to the flowing quality and so on and so forth. So there's many things in, 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 this, in, in these initial stages of the, 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 the seated sequence that we can begin to then take into our standing postures. So just turning and if you can get a sense of that sitting and the, the, the strength, the support that comes from that, notice how your movement may affect that. And you may find that as you start to move, you lose that sense of confidence, that sense of strength. Well, you may find that if you can turn it around and actually have a, an intent to move from there, then it changes the, the, the nature of the movement, the quality of the movement a, a, a little bit. So for instance, with this very simple movement, rather than thinking, oh, I've got to turn my head, can you bring your attention to that area around the spine in, 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 in your neck and just see if you can make those small movements there and notice what effect that has. hands in front of your shoulders. So we begin not only to feel supported by that quality of inner strength. And remember that's both a structural thing and almost an, an energetic thing. But we actually begin to initiate movement from that. Now what you may find is that suddenly you're not moving as far going forwards. And that probably means that you were moving too far before. But for the most part, you will find that you get that, that movement back through this process of the movement itself, like water kind of eroding and dissolving the, the, the barriers. Hands down to your sides and rotating your arms. It's a, it's a kind of two-way thing. And particularly, you know, with some movements, you'll find it more appropriate and more accessible to move from that inner feeling, that inner quality. Others, you'll find it won't be quite so straightforward. It, and, that, and that can vary from, from move to move. But what you can find is, is that moving, if you like, externally, can lead you to an, a greater awareness of what's happening within, within your body. And winding around. So Tai Chi and Qigong are described as internal arts, and this is really one of the meanings of it, but it's not meant to exclude the external. What I'm talking about here is not the total movement, but really where the movement comes from. And then back the other way. So we develop a sense both of what's happening within the body and a parallel sense of what's happening in the environment around us. Easing your weight forwards and pushing back. Pushing back is straightforward enough. We, we can register fairly quickly mostly that, that our feet and our legs push down, pushing our shoulders back. There's a need to strain in, 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 in our back. Not quite so obvious, I think, going forwards. But it's really a case of sinking into the hips and pushing there, almost like you're going to stand up. In general, I would say, but when we move internally, we move with greater stability and greater root. We move more appropriately in terms of distance and how we're moving, how we're responding to the external environment. If there's less stiffness, say, in our shoulders or our back, then those aspects of our shoulders and, and, and our back that may be more aware 
of what's going on around us. We have this all-round sense. Yeah, I'm I'm more able to function because they're not so concerned with holding you up and so on and so forth. And then turn in. Grandmaster Chen Shaowang uses an interesting phrase sometimes when he teaches. He said that we should look ahead and listen behind. And remember that tightness, stiffness, tension in, 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 in the body kind of blocks that listening, sensing process. Like your ears are suddenly filled with wax or something like that. And then turning the other way. We see this in lots of areas. I mean, a cat or a dog, their paws are quite soft and sensitive. So that they're able to sort of, at, at any particular moment, read what's going on in the ground beneath them. And then going around. Back the other way. Okay. Stepping. And when you step, again, sink into your hips. Try and keep your upper body still. Remember, your upper body is supported. And just extend and contract your, your leg. And on the other side. So this is a shorter than normal step. If we were going for a longer step, it would be quite legitimate to engage aspects of the upper body maybe by leaning or tilting the body or whatever but that's not our concern at the moment and then just see if you can do this part the foot down change the other side there'll be a slight shift in your weight use this other foot to help support you gently press this foot the one that you're not stepping with into the floor and then when you've taken the step, see if you can gently press that foot into the floor for a moment. And that may even help with the movement coming back. One more time. Okay. Practice those for long enough, and eventually the things I'm talking about will become habitual to you. Hands down by your sides. Turn your hands palm forward. Bird holds its wing. So, for instance, the big muscles of your arm, the big radial muscles, the biceps and triceps, although they're attached to, to, to your bones, of course, they're only attached in two places. In between, they should feel quite soft. If you're straining to move your arms by simply using those, that, those muscles, that would be quite difficult. But if you can get a sense for, say, for instance, that little push from your hip, coming up through your spine, down through, maybe down through the bones of your, your arm, for instance. Then it takes some of that burden off the, the, the muscles. And we get a much fuller sense of movement around the muscle, as well as in the muscle, and indeed around the bones as well. So that sense of the energy flowing is increased. Fisherman cast the net. Do 
drawing the ball in, rolling the ball in, is not lifting your arms. Or at least not initially. I go forwards, notice the angle between my arm and my body. As I come back, it doesn't change. Until I get to about here, then my elbow drops. They get a sense of that rise in movement, which pushes my arm up a, a, a little bit more. And in general, when we can get that sense of moving from inside, shall we say, we we realize that the more that we use our arms, if we overuse our arms, then or we use them in the wrong way, then it tends to block out those internal movements. So we want to retain a sense of quietness in our arms and our hands. And when we lose that, when we find ourselves going, oh, what, what's like this? Then it's a kind of message to bring your attention back into feet, legs, hips, the center of your body and so on. And then change into a pigeon spreads its wings. So it's whether we're viewing this from the outside in or the inside out. It's not about the, the external view being incorrect or undesirable or anything like that. Remember that Tai Chi was originally a martial art and it, had, it has developed ways to um, respond to and be aware of what's happening in the environment around us from within. And pushing wave. Punch with both fists. And then do a few rounds of those last three movements linked up. So, it just spreads its wings. Push him away. Punch with both of them. Changing.
one more time. We change the position of the table. You bring your hands back, turning them palm down, turning the center. Your arms. Extend gently out from your shoulders, much the same way as you might imagine a, a, a branch growing out from the trunk of the tree. Don't sort of reach out, rather let your body go forward, and the angle of your elbow extends. The fingers maybe have a sense almost of growing slightly. And again, this is something that can come out of that sense of what's happening deeper in the body. This is one of the ways that we get that range of movement back. Because there's no doubt it, it's good to be able to feel that you can move more. So when we talk about small movements being better than big movements, it, it's not so much better as it is. Um, it's better to think of the small movements initially, I suppose. But yes, yeah, we don't want to lose movement, do we? One more in each direction. So, rooting down. And when we move from deeper within the body, we perhaps understand the significance of the name rooting down. We can either think of this as a gentle pressure downwards through hips, through feet, or slightly more deeper sense. If you imagine here, you've got like a ball or a balloon, and the ball expands and then contracts. And of course, when it expands and contracts, it's not only going to push upwards, it's going to, it's going to push downwards as well. Both of those are much more internalized than the idea that we somehow have to lift our arms. And then your hands out the wild goose. Part in the clouds. Remember, this differs slightly from the standing version because you are tilting forward slightly, which you don't need to do when you stand. It's basically just to give space for your hands to pass in front of your knees. So we sit back first before we push up. Try not to get in, into a sense where you go from here to here. Although we do we do sort of do that later when we come to scooping the sea. Now dragon plucks the stars from the sky. So with less stiffness, less tightness in, in our body, we, we maintain and we develop, cultivate that space for movement within our body. And that's not just the sort of muscular movement, but the, you know, the flow of things like the blood and the energy, and really any kind of metabolic process that includes movement, which is probably most of them or many of them, is, is is helped by that space.
One more base. Changing. One more round. So the next movement is scooping the sea, looking at the sky. You extend one foot. You're going to be using this leg, the one that's flat on the floor, a little bit. And you could just pull on your neck, but instead, let your hips drop back and let that draw your arms over. We sit back into the chair. And again, this changes the feel, of, especially in back and shoulders. Still, though, be careful because there is a point, if I turn this way, I, I can get to here. But as I come up here, this, this position here is very strong on, on your, your, your back. You do need to maintain the structure of your back and spine. But even that really comes from, in, from I thought, a, a very kind of subtle Point. But yeah, go, go go very carefully. Likewise, when we go into grasping the tiger's ears, there's a bit where you know you, you, your your back is out there in space, as as it were. And so give time, <coughs> me, give time, give yourself time to practice and got your 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 body to build muscles in, in the appropriate way. And then on the other side. It's sometimes said of Tai Chi and Qigong that we make more use of tendons and ligaments than other forms of movement. And sometimes said that we make more use of what sometimes refer to as the skeletal muscles, the postural muscles. For instance, and this is a good example of them, I think, between the vertebrae of your spine, there are these little muscles that don't really um, normally contribute that much to, to movement, but maintain the structure. But well, we do actually start to use them because there's an expansion and contraction in the spine, but they still have this structural quality about them. And if they're underused, which they often are, then you need to give time for them to strengthen up. And then grasping the tiger there. That's just one example of this more internal viewpoint. and bring the feet back. There are other um, aspects to that term in, in internal. Um, it's often related to the significance of, of our mind, our intent, and our focus, and so on and so forth. And yet another view, and um, if you're interested in the history of these arts, is that it kind of has a kind of social historical um, significance from, a, from the time when China was was largely occupied by the by uh, Japan, um, and um, these arts were promoted as sort of indigenous art. In other words, they came from inside China rather than 
being imposed by an outside country. You know, there's all sorts of, 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 of aspects to it. Now, parting the wild horse's mane, move your weight back into your right hip, turning slightly. I'm exaggerating this, I'm actually twisting my back, but there's a slight turn. You go forwards, almost like you're pushing in with your shoulder, but you're turning, feeding your hand out, and then back and across. So there's a movement forwards into your foot as you turn. Try not to lean. You're, you're tilting forward in the way that we do earlier in, in the class. So I'm going to here. I'm not leaning out here. I'll try not to. I'll fully admit I don't always manage it, but you'll notice as soon as I go, oh, no, I'm tightening in the side of my body. This way, I can find a more fluid pathway. And sometimes that leaning comes from a misplacement of our attention. We're more concerned with what's happening with arms than we are with those internal movements. And so we think, we look at what's going on. So, oh, the arm goes out there and, and everything goes awry at that. Now do one more on each side in this way. Now we're going to bring up our feet more actively into the movement. So coming across, and this we're going to use that exercise we did earlier. Raise your heel with the other foot. I'm exaggerating. Put the foot out, put the heel down, toes down. Remember, press in and then move your weight in. Come back. You may get a little bit so bit bigger movement because you've changed what your feet are doing. Move across, bring the other foot in, step, heel, toe, press, and then the weight. This knee should be bent. So you know, learn to measure your step. Place the foot, move across. So really what we've done here is added one movement in. The arms haven't changed. We haven't, oh, uh, I'll just rephrase that. We haven't intended, we haven't tried to change our arms. The change is all about what's happening in one leg, one foot, rather than just leaving the foot in position, we change the position of the arm. That will have an, a, a knock-on effect to what's happening in the, the upper part of our body. Part in the wild horse's main step inversion. Seated step inversion. One more time on each side. Okay, and then just come back to sit. Open your hands together. Once again. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder and your arm. And the other side. Part of the chest, the belly, and your legs. Then just pushing your heels up, 
and then the big muscles of your legs, the calf muscles, gastrocnemius, hamstrings, quadriceps, working a little, a little bit. And then circling around, putting the movement into your hips, preparing legs and hips for the very kind of like key action of standing up. And then around. Well, remember, if we're moving from the inside, potentially all movements that we make, not just Tai Chi, can, can be done from that internal perspective. So standing, and once again, the, the term we want to think of is sitting. We sit into the um, hips, we sit into the ground, our legs, we sit into the internal part of the body. And it's quite interesting, um, tried it with a couple of groups actually, it worked quite well with one group, not with the other group who are perhaps a little bit more advanced, but generally speaking, we don't just go along and plonk ourselves in a chair. We go along, we touch the chair, we maybe move it or we, 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 we locate it. So again, we want a sense of the environment that we're in and the pull of gravity is, is a key part of that so that we can adjust our posture to, to, to what's happening there. This is where this little exercise, simply rocking forwards and backwards, becomes invaluable. Too far forwards or too far back is, is, is clearly wrong. Um, but if you can do so safely, and I would emphasize that, and you know, you maybe hold on to something. If it gets a bit windy, not too strong, don't go out and hug and, or, or, or something like that, but just maybe um, you know, if there's a fairly consistent wind, blowing at you, you could go forwards and then just let the wind move you back a bit and then go forwards. Uh, that's quite challenging because wind is really constant in it. And so sometimes it will move you, sometimes it won't. It's quite an interesting exercise. But as I say, do you know, go, 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 go carefully with it. If you've know, you got a garden table or something like that, hold on to that. And just just observe what's 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 going on in your body. It's not meant to be a kind of contest or anything. Coming, bringing your, yourself to that central position. Let your hips drop back. We'll do this as a little sequence. So rooting down and sinking, rooting down and and, and sitting. Really describe the same process. So just call from your memory. What, it, what it's like to sit. It might be sitting in your favorite armchair. Sorry, I said we're doing it as a So you're going into the wild goose. It might be a, sitting in your favorite armchair. It might be the reclining position that we took earlier in the session. Whatever memory is, is appropriate and kind of in a way, kind of send that to your body. It's like saying, this is what I want to do. In the same way that you know, if, you, if, you, if you build this up, if, if you go to tie your shoelaces, you, you rarely have to sort of like think, think about it. It's quite intuitive. And so again, we build up a sense of confidence in that inner strength, that inner structure of our body. In the end, it only takes a, a split second. But I talked about these punctuation points that we can begin to become aware of between each movement. And it's worth just emphasizing those for that settling in process in, in our own practice some of the time. So now have one foot forwards. You're going to transfer your weight. And to begin with, and only do this once or twice on, on each leg, I move my weight forwards. 
So I imagine that I can breathe up through my leg and breathe down, breathe out down through my, my leg. And particularly with the out breath downwards, that's when I look to sit into the leg. And then I go back, I will do the same thing on, 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 on my back leg. And then I go forwards, do it a second time on the front leg and so on. And then of course, you know, naturally we can't breathe through our leg. And so we, we, we leave that behind, but we try and retain that feeling of, of, of settling. And it really does only take a, a split second. So this is why I've started to call it a punctuation point rather than a pause, because it's not a pause. That implies that the movement really stops, but it's just a, a change in the nature of the movement. A comma in a sentence doesn't stop the flow of the sentence. And if anything, it enhances it. And yet it isn't in itself heard. You don't hear something, you don't, I don't say to you, comma, that I'm going to put a comma, comma in this sentence. But there are spaces in the sentences that you perceive. Raising your toes and your heel. Don't lean. So don't get to here and go here. Remember, that's what that comma, what that punctuation is, is, is really helping you with maintaining the structure. Draw your foot in. Replace the foot. If it's the back foot, a bit hook, all of the foot goes down, then the heel, then that little press down, and then your weight follows. If it's the front foot, it's your heel goes down, then the front of your foot, then the press, then your weight follows. You may even find that sort of that little press down through the foot encourages your weight to move. It leads the weight. This is planting the foot. And so when I talk about that press down, it's quite difficult to describe. I sometimes describe it as though you're on soft sand and just looking for the firmer sand underneath. Shake out. Have your other foot forwards. Sink back. Imagine breathing in through the leg and breathe out. And maybe before you start to move the weight, just applying that little bit of pressure downwards and then feeling your weight being drawn in, breathing in, breathing out. You don't have to take the step in order to do it. And then just leave behind the kind of breathing bit so that you've still got that little bit of space there for these processes, but they aren't taking that long. The term plant in the foot, I think, is a good one. And you know, if you're planting bulbs in, in, in your garden, you don't put the bulb on the ground and go, right, smack it into the ground. You, 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 know, you, you maybe dig a hole, then you press very gently. And that little bit of pressure downwards should be done in the same way. And then raising your toes and your heel. Stepping in. Along with the, if you like, physical benefits of this, of course, applying this kind of detail and you know, just pick up on whatever I've said that is useful to you. You're not necessarily going to absorb it all, but by bringing these details in, you're really taking your attention very deeply into your body. Step through. So the calmness, the stillness <clears throat> increases. And by taking your attention in, you're also bringing your intention 
deeper into your body. And that brings us full circle back to what I was talking about earlier, about where we make the movements from. In the other direction. And bring your feet parallel. You can have them slightly turned out if you like. And just as we did in the chair earlier, you can just do it like this. You can switch from one to the other. I think this is quite a useful exercise. I think that little switch across is actually quite tricky. I find it more difficult than the transfer forwards and backwards. It also means you can practice the step in without a great deal of space around you. And of course, it does also mean that if this is tricky for you and you feel you know, it will be nice to have some you know, some kind of security. I'm right back against the wall now. So what, what that means is that if, if I get it a little bit amiss, I'm, oops, I, I, I've got the wall to support. And again, this is, you know, some of this is confidence building. You, you can do this, but in a sense, you have to have a sort of like belief that it can work because otherwise this thing about intention, you know, you'll be wanting to do this, but there'll be a little bit of your intention that's saying, hold on, <laughs> this, you know, this, is, this, is a bit, this is a bit dodgy. And that will feed in, in, into your body. And you'll find that you're trying to do this kind of against your intention. There'll be this clash there. One more time. Good, and then just shake out. So I spent quite a lot of time on 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 that today. We'll 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 bring in the arms, um, but the problem is, <clears throat> as soon as we bring the arms in into the movement, they can dominate the the the, the whole movement. Um, so. And, and you can see why also. I mean, there are quite complex things that, that, that actually go on. So the, the things that I've been talking about, we want to settle at a kind of almost a subconscious level, a level of intuition and, and habit. And we, 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 we get that through, through practice. Have your right foot forwards, starting with fisherman cast the net. If we don't move our arms too much, then we can be remain aware of what's going on within the body. And in particular, just you know, feel what happens here. Where do you feel qualities of expansion and contraction as your arms swing through and up a bit? You may feel them. Here, as the arms swing back. For me, that's a little bit more difficult. But it's really, again, what, uh, observing. So the interesting thing here is, and bear in mind, we're about to make the transition to wind blows the willows. Your arms are already rising. And there's a connection to certain changes internally. So this time, as you go forward, you feel that movement, you turn in the center of your body and you don't, in theory, you don't have to do anymore. And this helps us to move away from an urge to kind of like do this with, with, with the arms. And if we, if we can avoid doing that, if we can get that internal feel here, then actually we're, we're, we're much more stable. But if we start going, oh, I've got to do this with the arms, and suddenly this can, can go wrong. So it's, it's quite a tricky process. And just to make it a little bit more difficult, we can bring the foot in.
and maybe in and up. So transferring the weight, turning, extending for our arms are all factors that, according to NH NHS figures, may cause us to lose stability, to fall. So this is quite a tricky exercise. There's a number of things going on here that could easily make us sort of wobble around. And this is where that internal view and the confidence in that internal structure of the body take on a really practical element, I think. So try on the other side, fisherman cast a net. We notice those moments of expansion and contraction within the body in that moment of punctuation. Some change into wind blows the willows. Bringing the foot in. Maybe from this position, raising your knee, maybe rotating to just bring that inside of your foot to the top position. If you, again, if you, know, if you feel you're wobbling around, and um, I don't do it, you know, I might go, oh, oh, no, I don't fancy that this time. I haven't quite got, 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 got there. And this is listening, not just to go what's going on within the body with some sense of this is how it should be, but rather, oh, no, I'm going to listen to, the, I'm going to listen to that part of me that's saying, you pick your foot up, you're going to fall over. And then dragonfly skim is the water. Going back. <clears throat> Again, this is a movement that can be done in a parallel stance. If the, the, the weather outside is really rough and I'm training indoors and I want to do dragonfly skin with the water, this is often how I do it. Okay, and then and then check out. Good. So this process that I sometimes refer to as internalization um, has 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 a great sort of like scope to it. I think when we do um, embrace tiger, return to mountain. I've talked about, you know, this idea of coming back to central equilibrium and so on and so forth. You, you, you could very easily see it as a way back in to the, 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 the internal strength, the internal quality, back into sitting 
Um, these are all, all of these terms and all of these ideas are really kind of lo looking at the same thing. It's just a question of trying to find different models and, and, and finding the one that, that offers you something. It's not that the others are, are, are incorrect. And you know, it may be that sitting is a better way of thinking of it. And that may lead to an awareness of, oh, yeah, the, the, the mountain or, 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 or something like that. So let your arms drop down and then embrace tiger, return to the mount. How would you sit into the chair? Which part of your body would go first to the chair? I mean, I know sometimes you reach out for the chair, but you've, you've, you've just kind of plumped down in, in the chair. Now you want to relax in, in the chair. It would tend to be you know, your hips and buttocks sinking into the chair with your, your ribs, your shoulders, your arms following that. One more time. And then just open your eyes. So there's a lot of information there. It's going to be up on YouTube later. So um, you can you, you can always go get go over there. In the meantime, thank you very much, everybody.